Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Divorce Conversation. And during this segment of the show, I have family law attorney Melissa Atterbury, who is the sole practitioner of the law office of Melissa A. Atterbury, calling in all the way from Chico, California. Now, Melissa, who has a wealth of experience in the area of family law, We'll be talking to you today about the importance of processing the grief from your divorce. So, if you are one of the increasing amounts of people in the Chico, California area who can, yeah, maybe you think you can relate to today's topic. If that's the case, you might just want to give yourself a break. Come on, log out of Facebook Twitter, Instagram, or anything else you happen to be doing which may cause a distraction. And yeah, pick up a notepad and pen even and get ready to take some notes as we listen in to what Melissa has to share with us today. So with that said, she's a very busy lady. Let's not keep her waiting any longer. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you, Stuart. You are so welcome. We're glad to have you on the show. So let's jump feet first in with our first question of the day. So, Melissa, in your own words, can you briefly describe the kinds of people who you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help? Um, My client base is generally husbands and wives or domestic partners or same-sex couples, or even parents in a custody dispute um, that are unmarried, um, most of the time at the onset of their separation, but sometimes when they're wanting to change their situation years down the road, if they're looking to change support or change custody situation. So sometimes it's it's the onset of their separation, and sometimes it is not. Okay, then, Melissa. So it goes without saying that anything you share with us today is not legal advice or legal assistance. It's purely for the purpose of sharing information. Okay, so can you agree with me on that, Melissa? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so when you think about the people who you serve, those people in divorce who come to you for your help, What's the most common misconceptions they have surrounding the topic of processing the grief from their divorce? Most of the time, um, parties look at a divorce as it's simply a business deal. And we just need to gather the information, find out what the assets are, find out what the income is, and find a solution. So divide the assets, calculate support, that it's simply a business deal that we need to work through. And in doing so, they're ignoring the emotional aspect and the grief process aspect of going through a divorce. And sometimes they need to give themselves a break and hit the pause button and let them process that grief. Okay, so based on what you just shared with us then, Melissa, and keeping your client's confidentiality in mind, of course, please share an example or a case study, so to speak, of how you've helped or how you would go about helping someone who comes to you with those challenges, with that misconception you just described, and what kind of transformational results you were able or would be able to gain for them? The most common um, solution to addressing the grief is to simply hit the pause button and simply give the parties a time out. And I also do a lot of mediation um, and collaborative work. um, And it's through that training that I've truly got an understanding of the emotional aspects of divorce. But to have the parties pause and allow one of the parties, usually they're not on the same track of the grieving process. When you see or when you experience a divorce, 
the person that has requested the divorce is far ahead of the grieving process of the other partner. And we see that oftentimes, especially if they come in immediately after the breakup. It's not unusual for one party to be just stunned that they did not see this coming. Um, and so I will tell the party that requested the divorce a request from that party. Hey, can we do a time out? Can we allow them to seek counseling and start processing the grief of this divor- divorce before we start pounding um, an agreement through that people aren't happy with a month after they've reached it? So I think it's very important to try to reach an agreement that's a durable agreement, not just an agreement that's pounded out when neither or one of the parties is not emotionally ready to do that. As a reminder for the listeners out there, my guest today is family law attorney Melissa Atterbury, and she's calling in all the way from Chico, California. And today's topic, what we're talking about, is the importance of processing the grief from your divorce. Now, with that in mind, Melissa, and for those people who are listening in right now, they're wanting to know more, please share one common but unknown pitfall that they need to avoid regardless of what situation they find themselves in. People generally just want to push through just to to force themselves or the other party to go to hearing, if that's the track that they're on, if they're in a litigated process, to have a hearing as soon as possible. Um, And oftentimes they're, they're not realizing that they're acting out of fear or vulnerability. They're not realizing that they're acting out of the emotions of the divorce instead of what actually needs to be happening right now. So I think the biggest pitfall is just trying to push through when one or the other parties is not ready to do that. So Melissa, I'm curious, how many years have you been practicing family law? 22 years. Oh my goodness, that's quite a long time. So in all those years of being a family law attorney, what have you found to be the most important thing to you about helping your clients to process grief from their divorce? I think the most helpful thing for me is understanding the emotional part of it Mm -hmm. and having the training to deal with that emotional part of it. Um, When I learned about collaborative law and went through mediation training, it really expanded my training and my exposure to what that was about. And I think a lot of attorneys don't have that training and don't have that understanding of the emotional impact. impact. In fact, just a few months ago, shortly after a hearing that dealt with temporary custody and support, when I could recognize that the other party was in such emotional turmoil um, that it was very difficult for them, and she was just reeling from it, and I, the other attorney wanted to sit down and, okay, let's deal with property. Let's schedule a time that we can all sit down and do with that. And I said, I think it'd be a good idea if we took a time out. Like, let's deal with property in a month or two after your client had an opportunity to process the grief of all of this. She's clearly reeling from that. Mm. And the other attorney looked at me and said, Atterbury, seriously, nobody died here. It's a divorce. And I just kind of shook my head like, you have no clue. And oftentimes, and I've seen it time and time and time again, if we don't schedule that meeting for a month and just give a month for someone to process that, we can reach an agreement. If we're trying to pound it through and to keep the fight going, so to speak, it'll be a year and a half before we have an agreement or a resolution because it's a fight at every angle. Okay, Melissa, so now that we know what's uh, most important to you about helping your clients who wish to process the grief from their divorce, could you just spend a brief moment telling us a little bit about your background and especially your formal education and your experience as it relates to the topic of family law? I graduated law school in 95. 
for about the first year, I did a assortment of areas of law. I think like a lot of attorneys do. I frankly had no desire to be a family law attorney. My classmates at law school comment often that they're shocked I was because I wanted to be, be a property attorney, mm. uh, ag attorney. I'm in an ag agricultural area. Right. But when I started doing family law, I realized that no other legal process mattered to the client more. So that was my appeal in family law. I felt like I could truly make a difference. And then I received mediation and collaborative training in 2009. Um, and that shifted the direction of my practice because I realized the destruction about that point in my career mm-hmm. that happens in family. Um, the financial and emotional destruction, you know, the parties are already um, fractured. So the you know, lesser damage we can do as family law attorneys, the better. After 22 years then, Melissa, you must have helped hundreds of people, possibly thousands of people. How do you feel when you wake up in the morning and you have a full day's work ahead of you helping your clients through the process of divorce. How, are you still motivated? How do you feel on a day like that? Um, sometimes it can be exhausting. Mm-hmm. Um, it can take a lot out of you. Uh, you have to learn to do a lot of self-care and take time off and recharge and regroup because it, it does take a lot out of you emotionally. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's really gratifying when you can get parties through a process and realize that you've done no harm. um, I think that's an amazing contribution. So that helps heal, so to speak. Right. And especially because you're not only just helping the clients who walk through your door, but you're helping those hidden um, victims, the children, the, the, the ones who don't have a voice. And that must be especially gratifying, right? Absolutely. I had a referral from another local attorney who his focus is on property and financial division. And he often refers to me um, custody cases. And he told the potential clients that beware, she'll care about, more about her, your kids than she does about you. Right. I thought that was the greatest compliment ever. When you think about the people who come to you for your help and they're wanting to dig a little bit deeper into the topic of processing grief from their divorce. Now, with that picture in mind then, Melissa, what final thoughts would you like to impart with those people before we finish up with our last question for today? I would just ask them to recognize where they're at in the grief process because a breakup is a grieving process. Um, You've lost that life you thought you would have with that other person. So number one, recognize it as a grieving process, treat it like a grieving process, know where you're at in the grieving process and try to have some understanding and some empathy to where the other person is in the grieving process and act accordingly. Right. So if there is somebody who's listening right now and they feel after listening to you, hey, you know something, I really need to understand more about the grieving process in my own divorce. What's the easiest way for them to connect with you? My website is net. Or my email is simply Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, at lawchico.com. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, my guest for today was family law attorney Melissa Atbury. Thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Melissa. You have certainly demonstrated that you're a true educator and advocate for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you, Stuart. You are so welcome. I'd also like to say a big thank you to you, the listener. Thank you for joining us on what I can only describe as a very insightful 
and informative conversation with top family law attorney Melissa Atterbury all the way from Chico, California. Make sure you do check her out. Give her a call. Visit her website. Whatever you do, I am sure that you're going to be in good hands. So that's it, folks. Once again, my name is Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading divorce professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Divorce Conversations. So until then, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.